Welcome to the World Chess Championship 2014. Magnus Carlsen, defending world champion from Norway, rated 2863, highest rating ever in the history of chess. Looking to defend his title. Magnus won it last year from former world champion Vishyanan, seen here, ex world champion from India. Vishy's looking for revenge. It's going to be a great, great match. Stay tuned for the games. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Round 11 of the World Chess Championship 2014. This is a great game, folks. Great game. Will Vichy pull off a win to tie the match? Will they draw and play round 12? Or will Magnus win and end the match? We'll have to see. Magnus Carlsen, current world champion, is white. Vichy Anand, former world champion, is black. It's going to be a Berlin, which is a big shock. Interesting enough, though, Magnus played E4. In every one of his white games. I know that from just from memory. And also, there's going to be both players at press conference at the end of the video here. He some interesting uh, questions and how they felt. Things like that and what they thought about the match so far. Anyway, night F3. We'll go through the Berlin here. We've all seen it a couple thousand times. Pawn takes. Knight F4. Queen takes. King takes. H3. Bishop D7. Typical stuff, three quarters of an advantage, maybe a little bit better for white, but we've all just seen this a million times. I think years ago when Vladimir Kramnik said when he was developing the Berlin and they helped him beat Gary Kasparov for the World Championship that he told Nigel Short, Kramnik did, that he's hoping that his Berlin will stop world-class players from playing E4. <laughs> Knight C3, H6. Just secures that square. I mean, that's going to be really annoying. If that knight gets up there, the king will have to move. B3. There are so many different subtleties in the Berlin. I couldn't even begin to tell you on all the variations, nor would I want to or bore you to nauseam with them. King C8. Just typical. What black wants to do is go pawn here and then tuck his king here. That's the, that's the plan for black. Bishop B2. C5, move the pawn first. Rook A to D1, B6. Rook F to E1. Computer kind of like knight to D5. And then bishop B6 is the response. Rook F to E1. Black can take his time, tucking a king into B7. Get your bishop off that square so the king can move. Eventually move the bishop on F8, connect your rooks. Because you can't castle because you retook with the king when the queen exchanged. Knight d5, g5, c4. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. If Vichy wins this game, <clears throat> Vichy is black, he'll tie up the match. And I think the game he lost to Magnus, I think it was round six, I don't recall. Boy, I'll tell you, he had that game, but oh well, you know. The, how's that saying go? Don't spend too much time on today because of yesterday. Something like that. King b7, tucking your king away. Eventually move the dark squared bishop for black and connect your rooks. King comes up. That's an interesting move. Now, that's also the computer move, believe it or not. So I'm sure these guys are well in the theory. We're on move 16 only. These guys got this figured out in the Berlin to move 25-30. King h2. A5. What he's trying to do is keep this pawn back and eventually go here and try to open up the position to get his rook into play. Smart move there. A4. So Magnus just shuts that down. Knight E7. <coughs> Excuse me. Look and exchange knights. Knight F6 the computer likes. I probably would have played that as well. Bishop c3, g4, all within close of each other. Magnus decided on g4. Knight g6. Going after this pawn here. Starting to put pressure on it. It's well protected now. It's picking by three pieces, but even still. 
King G3. Interesting. That's a computer move. And the other move is, is Knight to F6, but King to G3 is by far the better move. It stops the Knight from coming in here. He's going to lose his pawn. And plus it just helps protect the pawns. Without queens on the board, your king's an important piece. Bishop E7, I mean important as in not so much... Uh, but for attacking and defending. Without queens on the board, I've read or seen studies that show the king in an endgame, depending on how many pieces are on the board, the king is worth four pawns. The knight and the bishop's only worth three, so it's an important piece. You've got to keep it active. Knight to d2, and you can see that's the route that he wants to take. Knight to e4, and then knight up to f6. Rook h to d8. Two choices here, I think, for Magnus. Knight takes c7, or knight to e4. <clears throat> Magnus chose knight to e4. I kind of like that a little better. At least aesthetically, white looks really good here. Computer shows just a tiny advantage. But these guys know aesthetics don't mean anything. They're world-class players. But the guys like us, it looks like white is really doing really well. It's basically even. Bishop f8 wants to keep that bishop. Knight comes here. Now that's a good spot for that knight, but the problem is they're defending each other. They're not covering enough spaces. And it's good to have your knight on the sixth rank, but I think it's Rex Singfeld from the St. Louis Chess Club and Scholastic Center says they're codependent. B5. Now that's a really interesting move. C6, Bishop G7. I probably would have played Bishop G7. But Vichy saw a c6, by the way, for black makes the score dead even. I kind of like c6 myself. But he had an interesting, uh, interesting move here. b5 opens up everything. It allows that rook to get in. You sacrifice a pawn temporarily, but I'll tell you what, it opens up the position a lot. Eventually, this pawn can move depending opens up this bishop, this rook can get in, and Vichy was going for it. Bishop c3, I'll give you an idea if he had taken c6, knight, bishop takes, rook checks, takes, takes, c takes, knight takes, rook takes, knight takes, bishop takes, Knight checks, king c6. And that actually is an advantage for black, a small one. But at least black now has some counterplay, and the position is up, opened up dramatically. Meg just wanted none of that, of course. And he played pawn takes, pawn takes, king c6. Get your king right up there. Bishop g7, again, I think is worth looking at. Or maybe bishop b7. King c6. Now this is a move Magnus was asked about during the press conference. What he thought of this move. And he said he needs to get the king up to protect the e5 and d5 squares. Computer calls for rook to d3, rook to e3. Basically the same. He went king to f3. Rook comes over, of course. That was the whole idea. The b5 moves open up the b file. King e4. Now, right now, it shows a tiny advantage. Now, you're going to see a move here coming up. Vichy said it was his nerves. I think, frankly, he took a calculated risk. He just rolled the dice. We're on game 11. He draws this game. He has to win the last game. But Vichy has white in game 12. And I think he's just rolling the dice. One way or another, he's either going to tie the match today or it's going to be over. Rook to b3 is the computer's choice. He went rook to b4 in exchange sacrifice. Now, of course, we're, I've got a computer off screen, so I have a totally unfair advantage. And Vichy looked at this and looked at this. He rolled the dice is what he did. Bishop takes, pawn takes. He's thinking probably he's going to eventually get this pawn. This pawn can run. The bishop's now opened up. This bishop's going to be opened up. 
Maybe even this pawn might fall, depending. A takes leads to knight h5. And that might have been interesting, too, but I think c takes was the correct move. Knight h5 anyway. King b7. King comes back. He wants to move the c pawn. Probably chase the knight off of d5. f4. G takes. The knight on the h file, of course, takes because that knight on d5 is really in a good spot. Knight takes. Knight takes. Interesting if king had taken c6, knight e3, king b6. Small advantage for white in that one. So knight taking with the knight was the correct move. Bishop takes. Rook d7. That rook gets in there now. To get that pawn in c4, you had to give up that. Now this is where I think the pressure got to Vichy. He's looking at this now and he's thinking, boy, oh boy, I rolled the dice and I don't think it worked out. What do I do here? I mean, the f7 pawn is hanging. His king's way out of play. White's got a lot more space. Bishop a2. Rook c8, rook e8. It's still over a two-point advantage for white. But Vichy decides to go rook a6. And now it's over a three-point advantage for white. To give you an idea, after rook c8, rook c1, you really didn't want that at all. After rook a6, knight to d5, hitting the pawn here again. Rook c6, defending. Rook takes... Bishop c5, just trying to block it off the file. And he played rook takes c7 anyway. After rook takes, knight takes, king c6. If he had taken the knight, then rook here wins the piece back in its curtains for black. King c6. B3 might have been a last-ditch effort. Then after knight to e8, bishop g8, knight checks, king b6. It's still it's still very bad for black. After knight c6, good move here. Knight here. Now what Magnus is trying to do, he's trying to simplify everything. Get it down where this pawn will be a monster. And after he pushes the pawns here, this pawn will be a monster. Bishop takes. If he had checked instead, king d3, king d7, knight d4, and it's still bad. After bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes. It looks like those pawns can run for black, but they really can't. e6. B3 moves the king over. Now, this rook is going to escort that pawn down. Bishop has to move the pawn to e7. H4, there it goes. Now, what's going to happen here is Magnus is going to push. This bishop is really worthless because this pawn can continue on. He's going to lose the bishop for the rook if he does that, and the game is over, of course. A4 continues on. If he had played bishop takes e7, of course, and that ends the game. A4, g5, h takes, h takes. What's he going to do? He went a3 and king c3. And that's where Vichy Anand, former world champion, resigns. Magnus Carlsen defends his title. He is still current world champion. I thought it was a hell of a game. Interesting press conference after with each player having his own press conference in the press conference room. And hats off to Vichy. I thought he played a lot better than he did last year. And I think it was game six where he had Magnus beat and missed it. I think it would have changed this dramatically. But this is a much improved version of Vichy than last year. His nerves didn't hold up as well as Magnus's, And I think they both said so. Anyway, folks, I thought this was a hell of a game. 
Got to give Vichy credit for rolling the dice. Maybe they ripped the B4, wasn't so good, but it's the idea that I'm not going to lay down that I like. Anyway, folks, watch the press conferences after the video here. And congratulations to Magnus Carlson. And I also say congratulations to Vichy Anon. I thought you played a hell of a, hell of a match. And also to win the tournament to get here again, which nobody thought you could do, and you did. So congratulations to Vichy as well. And that's the end of World Championship Chess for 2014. I hope you enjoyed it. I believe it's going to be two more years for the next championship. So, as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Ну да, я поэтому могу все равно позже будет. Okay. So we are ready to start the press conference and uh, we have uh, Vishwanathan Anand with us and uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, Arkady Dvorkovic. Uh, the, the match has been finished, so my first question is to Vishwanathan Anand. What happened in this last game and uh, um, what can he say about it? Um, well, it was a very tense position and um, when I got this B5 break, uh, I mean, I understood that um, if he actually doesn't take the pawn either way, then um, uh, the position still stays very tight. And, um, well, at this stage I saw that um, I could play bishop g7 and it's about equal. And um, suddenly I saw rook b8, king e4, and I was looking at... Uh, Rook b3, which I think is also ab about equal, but we calculated some line like this. Um, sorry, bishop a5. And now I, I cannot really take the h3 pawn because I get sidelined, but I thought something like this. And again, I, I evaluated this as um, equal. And I can't say why I suddenly decided to go for this uh, exchange sack. I mean, uh, Did you I didn't see anything very quick for white, but, um, uh, well, to be honest, I noticed H4, which could be unpleasant. Um, but okay, it was a bad gamble and I was punished. Um, can you say that in this particular game you decided to take some risks, let's say, in order to win it? I would say at this particular moment rather than earlier. I mean, earlier I was still playing objectively, but um, I think when we go, uh, got to about move 27, then I probably uh, took a nervous decision. How can, how can you describe this match? Um, was it really a big fight, tough match? What can you say about it? Yes, I mean, um, I was ha happy with some things. I, uh, for instance, uh, did much better with white than last year. Um, but um, with the black pieces, it didn't work out so well. And, uh, well, I think it was a tougher match, but um, in the end, I have to admit, he was superior. I mean, his nerves held up better. Do we have questions from journalists? Mr. Anand, uh, after this loss, have you, uh, are you considering leaving chess at the top level? No. <laughs> yes. uh, there is a microphone, please. Take it. Hi, Tim Wall for New in Chess. Um, you mentioned at the moment when you played uh, b5, and then, then afterwards when you played rook b8, instead of rook b8, bishop e7 was, uh, was being analyzed by some machines. It seemed to be in black's favor. Did you think so? Or? Um, yes, I, to be honest, I focused more on bishop g7 than um, Bishop e7, but it's the same variation. Bishop e7, king e4, 
Bishop takes f6, e f6, and then he can, I can take on d5, and that, that probably is better. I wasn't, um, I wasn't thinking very clearly at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Magnus Carlsen now will jump in again. What can you say uh, about him? Um, well, he's obviously very strong. I don't need to explain that. And um, um, I have to admit that in this match, all things taken into account, he just played better. Um, I, I did some things better, but I did some things worse. Uh, how, how do you think this uh, match will be rem remembered? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Um, Mr. Nam, um, there's been a lot of talk about nerves uh, during this game. Uh, how did you, your nerves hold up? Well, obviously, my nerves were the first to crack. Um, and to be honest, um, the match situation allows him a certain degree of comfort, but in general, I think uh, his nerves hold up very well. Um, um, I think he's more stable overall. So. Avish, you and Magnus exchanged some words on stage after the game. I'm wondering if you can care to elaborate what you spoke about. Well, we discussed one or two variations. This uh, bishop e7, bishop g7, and also rook b3. Basically, the three things I showed came up. Um, question to Vishy Anand. Vishy, compared to the other match in China last year, what can you say? You improved your physical shape, you know, opening shape. Or what you missed? Have you missed any chance here to win this match? I played much better. I wouldn't say... Um, um, I mean, I, I kept getting uh, interesting positions to play and things like that, which uh, was not really happening in Chennai a lot. But um, somehow I, I had more weak moments than him, and uh, this tended to uh, decide the match. Вопрос к Аркадию Дворковичу. Аркадий Владимирович, скажите, вот матч в Сочи сегодня завершился. Можно ли сказать, что в России будут еще поединки за шахматную корону? Был вот в Москве в 2012 году, сейчас в Сочи. Конечно, Россия будет, конечно, Россия будет продолжать проводить турниры и матчи на самом высоком уровне. От крупнейших турниров до шахматных олимпиад и матчей на первенство мира, если Международная Федерация Шахмат даст России такое право. And I would like to thank Vishy for the great match. And uh, I hope that uh, you are comfortable here and uh, Russia will be proud to host such tournaments here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much for. The about to start another press conference. I would like to congratulate uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen on his victory. And we have also the, the chairman of organizing committee and uh, Deputy Prime Minister Arkady Dvorkovich with us. So please take your seats. We would like to start the press conference. Okay, please. Okay. So, Magnus, how do you feel now? The match is over. Oh, uh, happy and relieved. So, it was a uh, tough match uh, almost from, from the start. Uh, and uh, today was uh, one of the toughest days of all. But I'm so happy I managed to, uh, to pull through. Can you tell us about this last game? And uh, did you have feeling actually it's going to be the last day of the match today? Uh, a little bit, yes. Uh, of course, I didn't. I didn't particularly want to to come back for for twelfth game with Black, uh, and uh, it was a little bit more complicated than uh, our previous. Um, games in which I have been white, um, 
this day there was was a real struggle uh, I had the initiative but he created uh, counter chances but eventually I handled the complications better than him and gained the match. Yes, okay. <coughs> Speaking about this critical moment before, what did you feel when he played this move? Did, how did you estimate the position? Um, in general I'm uh, a believer in material so I, I like to uh, to grab it instead of giving it up so I was um, fairly happy when he played that move since I thought um, that you shouldn't have enough compensation uh, and I, I thought uh, after other moves um, he, he, he should be doing fine so uh, I was pretty relieved about that uh, and also, I was happy to find this plan with Knight H5, uh, and F4. Um, F4, and kicking his bishop from E6 because um, that's really what's um, causing me a lot of problems. I mean, once his bishop goes from E6, I can inva invade with a rook, and um, uh, and then it's uh, very difficult for him. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to ask last question, then I will give a floor to journalists. Uh, what can you say in general about the organization? Are you happy to be? in Russia, in Sochi, was everything fine during the match? Yes, I'm, I'm happy uh, with everything. Um, my, uh, my team and I have been treated uh, really well. Um, uh, so um, uh, everything's, uh, everything's fine. Okay, so please questions. <coughs> Magnus, how satisfied are you about your play in today's game? Um, it's it's hard to say. Um, I think um, perhaps I didn't uh, play the best way from, let's say, move 18, 19 to 23, because then he um, all of a sudden this B5 created a lot of counterplay. Uh, but I'm very happy with the way I pulled myself together after that, um, and. Uh, I think uh, after he gave up the exchange, um, I played it quite forcefully and uh, he didn't have many chances. Obviously a very dramatic ending uh, to the match, Magnus. Can you try to compare it to, to the win last year? Uh, yes, uh, there were there were some comparisons, of course, with, uh, with the ninth game of the last match. Uh, but um, clearly, I, I was in even greater peril in, in that in that game. Um, but um, uh, obviously, apart from that, it was tougher this time. Yes, Magnus. Uh, Michi talked about uh, his nerves cracking at the end of this game. Uh, how were your nerves during this, this game? Um, I, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, uh, and uh, towards the end, uh, I, I got really excited, so I, I had to try and uh, control myself then. Uh, but uh, I don't know. You gotta you gotta focus on on the game, and uh, but it, yeah, it's 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 hard uh, when you're playing such an important game, and and. Uh, and uh, the position is not at all under control, um, so uh, there definitely were were nerves. But I, I I do think that I handled them better than he did. Okay, let's first here and then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Вопрос на русском задам. Магнус в прошлый раз после победы вы искупались в бассейне. В этот раз, может быть, планируете прыгнуть в море или что-то еще? Есть какие-то пожелания, ощущения? The last time uh, you won the title, you jumped into the swimming pool. Uh, what is the plan for this uh, victory? Are you going to jump uh, in the sea, perhaps? <laughs> no, I, I'm al already a little bit sick, so I, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Uh, Magnus, on the, on the very first move, the video seems to show that you almost uh, fumbled the pawn. Any connection to nerves? Not particularly. Uh, that's more, I don't know, yeah, laziness. Um, 
nothing to do with nerves. How happy are you with your play overall throughout the whole match? Mm. It's, um, as I mentioned at an earlier press conference, I think it's been uh, inconsistent, but uh, um, it, it, it was evidently good enough. Um, but um, I, I, can, I can still improve, but I, I certainly did some, some good things as well, and uh, for sure he, he played better than he did last time, and he really pushed me to, to the end. Minus, what do you think it was the turning point in the match, the sixth game? Um, yeah, yes, um, but I, I don't know. Um, obviously, there there was a, a there was an exchange uh, of um, ridiculous blunders in in that game. But I think apart from that, I did pretty much control that game. Uh, so it wasn't that unfair th that I won it. Uh, but uh, there were many twists and turns. I, I, I thought after the, the first couple of games that I was playing um, much better than he was. But then um, game three obviously got me back to, to earth again. Um, but and, um, now this is where I think the pressure got to Vichy. He's looking at this now and he's thinking, boy, oh boy, I rolled the dice and I don't think it worked out. What do I do here? I mean, the F7 pawn is hanging. This king's way out of play. White's got a lot more space. Bishop A2. Rook C8, Rook E8. It's still over a two-point advantage for White. But if Vichy decides to go Rook A6... And now it's over a three-point advantage for White. To give you an idea, after Rook C8, Rook C1, I mean, you really didn't want that at all. After Rook A6, Knight to D5, hitting the pawn here again. Rook C6, defending. Rook takes Bishop C5, just trying to block it off the file. And he played rook takes c7 anyway. After rook takes, knight takes, king c6. If he had taken the knight, then rook here wins the piece back in its curtains for black. King c6. b3 might have been a last ditch effort. Then after knight to e8, bishop g8, knight checks. King B6, it's still it's still very bad for black. After knight C6, good move here. Knight here. Now what Magnus is trying to do, he's trying to simplify everything. Get it down where this pawn will be a monster. And after he pushes the pawns here, this pawn will be a monster. Bishop takes, if he had checked instead, king d3, king d7, knight d4, and it's still bad. After bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes. It looks like those pawns can run for black, but they really can't. e6, b3, moves the king over. Now, this rook. Is going to escort that pawn down. Bishop has to move the pawn to e7. h4. There it goes. Now what's going to happen here is Magnus is going to push. This bishop is really worthless because this pawn can continue on. He's going to lose the bishop for the rook if he does that. And the game is over, of course. a4 continues on. If he had played bishop takes e7, of course, and that ends the game. A4, G5, H takes, H takes. What's he going to do? He went A3 and King C3. And that's where Vichy Anand, former world champion, resigns. Magnus Carlsen defends his title. 
He is still current world champion. I thought it was a hell of a game. Interesting press conference after with each player having his own press conference in the press conference room. And hats off to Vichy. I thought he played a lot better than he did last year. And I think it was game six where he had Magnus beat and missed it. I think it would have changed this dramatically. But this is a much improved version of Vichy than last year. His nerves didn't hold up as well as Magnus's, and I think they both said so. Anyway, folks, I thought this was a hell of a game. Got to give Vichy credit for rolling the dice. Maybe they ripped the B4, wasn't so good, but it's the idea that I'm not going to lay down that I like. Anyway, folks, watch the press conferences after the video here. And congratulations to Magnus Carlson. And I also say congratulations to Vichy Anand. I thought you played a hell of a, hell of a match. And also to win the tournament to get here again, which nobody thought you could do. And you did. So congratulations to Vichy as well. And that's the end of World Championship Chess for 2014. I hope you enjoyed it. I believe it's going to be two more years for the next championship. So as I always say... If you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.